Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Latherix, and welcome back to the Scythe. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of engineering. Off camera I have changed a few of the internals of my new, uh, my new helicopter, however I am still nowhere near entirely happy with it. It is definitely a work in progress, and as something I've not really done before, it's more of a uh, experiment than anything else. We, we, we seem to be doing quite a bit of experimentation in the in this season, but I think that's the whole point, considering I've never really tried to go with this kind of playstyle before. So anyway, what have I changed? The missiles on the front now face down, and admittedly they didn't have quite enough space, so they stick out more than I like, but um, without using the laser, what do you call it, the laser -ma thing, where are you, the laser emitter, the, the, this is probably the best idea for such a fast vehicle. Firing forward simply meant they bounced off the hull when they fired, as well they're nowhere near as fast as the vehicle, which can now get to a whopping speed I think of 50 per second, since I've added some more thrusters and stuff. Uh, ignore the fact it goes down to start off with, that's just because of, well, the thruster placement is terrible, but it does stay up in the air as intended. Also the whole fact is, like I said before, I do want it to... Oops. I do want it to always tilt forward for the mines. Now, a lot of you did mention a lot of stuff about the mines, including the fragment warhead magnets being the wrong way around. This was true, however it doesn't really matter unless we're going with a much more accurate fragment, which I actually might do, to be perfectly honest. Oh wait, no, the, the mine is on the front already. Yep. Nope, never mind. The Oh, on this side isn't yet. Wow, one side was wrong, one side was correct. How did I manage to do that? Uh, apparently science. So I'm actually going to sl slightly decrease this. The idea is, it's a bit more risky for the for the fragment explosion, but if it does work with the magnet actually aiming it forward, it will hopefully do some more damage if we're lucky. Now, I'm not, not sure if I actually assign that to all. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay, let's do that again then quickly. Because I have double fragment, that'd be cool. And also, a lot of you did express concern about the idea that most of the shots were actually missing, as in the mines, a lot of them were missing, particularly as it, um, as it moved past an enemy, it would continually bombard the area. Now, this is intentional, so please don't worry about that. That is a... A choice of mine, a stylistic choice. I prefer that because it means that no matter what, what what kind of tilting your robot's doing, there's a much higher chance of them actually dropping onto the enemy. The reason why this happens is because there's a delay on the drop, so they don't all drop at once um, in the perfect place. But also, I just like the look of it. Having a carpet bomb is amazing to view, even if it does sacrifice a fair bit of damage. That's one of my things. I have increased the power of the engine so that the shields are doing better, but today we're actually going to see if we can replace the laser system, yes indeed. I have three, four laser systems, one in here, one in here, one in here, and one over there. Each are their own system, because I wanted them as their own system rather than one sharing the power. So what we're going to be replacing it with is... wait for it... Something inspired by the plunderer. Yes, we are learning from the enemy. We are. We will go. We will be using the sticky flares as a form of well, flare, a way to distract enemy missiles. Now, well, we're going to we're going to use two things. Actually, that's not entirely true. Not only are we going to be using the sticky flares, we're also going to be using the missile interceptors. Now, this is going to be a weird one, because I have never used the missile interceptor. A long time ago, I used the old name, uh, the oldly named Sticky Flare. I think it used to actually just be called Flare or something else. That's why I got so confused last time, um, before it was called Sticky Flare, because it didn't attach. You, you get the idea. It was named something different when it was first implemented, I believe, and I have used them in the past. These are new to me in every single way. I have no idea how they work. I've never looked at a tutorial, and it's going to be weird. The Interceptor gets its target from the AI's missile warning cameras, so that's fine. It will target a single, mis a single missile at a time, and if it gets below 20 meters from the target, will detonate and potentially destroy the incoming missile. An interceptor can engage multiple missiles and can detonate its charges once per second. Now that is odd. Very odd indeed. An interceptor can engage multiple missiles and can... Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I, I, I understand that, I understand that, never mind, I just didn't quite understand that. So, yeah. 
This is going to be weird. So the whole concept is your missiles go towards the enemy missiles and explode within a certain radius of them, thus trying to destroy them. Now, I don't know which warhead would be better. Would it be EMP? Would EMP? I doubt it because of the lack of the AOE. Would it be explosive, potentially? Or would it be fragment? Because fragments do have a tendency to blow each other up, so I don't really know. So what I'm going to do now is go back into the bowels of the ship. My god, this it's a very crowded set of bowels indeed. And we're going to strip the laser systems out, or at least these two on the sides. I may keep these two, I am, but very, very tempted to keep these two, or perhaps even put them on the bottom, I'm not sure. I've also um, added some extra armor to the bottom here, and I will be shielding it once I figure out a better way to do the engine. Currently, I have been, like I say, I've been changing it to a less fuel efficient version. It's just the lack of space. It only has, I think, eight or less um, cubes of space to go forward, and about four uh, wide, so yeah, there's a lot of problems with this, because essentially what we've tried to do is fit a lot of stuff which would be on a bigger um, a helicopter, possibly like as if all of this was filled, and tried to put it on a fast and medium-sized copter, although it is still, still pretty big. So, be right back once that has been done. Well, here we are. We've just um, gutted out the laser systems on the two sides, leading to a nice hollow zone. So, that's odd. Apparently, um, some of the enemies must have attacked each other or something. That's come up. So, anyway, yes, time for the anti-missile missiles. So, what do we have here? We have short-range thrusters, fuel tanks, fins, da, da, da. Okay, I want at least one bigger than that. So it's about this size. Okay, target precision I want now to be a one turn, I imagine. And then the infrared can become... Where are you, my lovely thing? There we are, the missile interceptor. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the fragment warhead is better with a huge cone attached to it, but I'm not certain about this. That's me taking a kind of a risk, so I'm honestly not too certain. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is actually fire this thing so I can see how far those missiles will go. Of course, we do want the short-range thrusters as they are quick and kind of reliable. We could use the variable and make that even quicker, but I think I'd rather just go with the tried and tested. So, so let me just put a, um, a chair here so I can actually go and jump onto this section and then just remove the chair I'm currently on, which is literally standing on a block of repair stuff. There we are. Well, actually, no, it's on the A block of um, something else, but the AI underneath it. So, teleport to the scythe. There we are. And fire the missiles. Thing is going whichever direction I was actually pointing. Wow, it fired everything. Oops. I think I'm attached to the right one. Am I not? Looks like I am. Well, anyway, that ran out about 800-ish. Of course, you're, I'm right next to the system, aren't I? Now, am I actually on the right one? I don't think I am. It's they're the ones I should be on. Well, they should be about the same, anyway, because they're the same kind of thing, so... Okay, before 800. Okay. Now, I need to know that, and it's quite important I know that, because of one very important reason. Um, we don't want the missiles firing if there's no missiles to fire at, as it is basically worthless. Of course it can do some damage, but I'd rather not waste the ammo when the chances of them actually hitting the target is even less than my other missiles. So, we put this here. Ah. Having this so close is going to be a serious problem. Okay, we're going to need to move this... This, this is actually only so far back anyway, because... Um, because, at the time, we had the laser system in here. So let me just move all this stuff forward so I've got some more space to work with these. There we are. Although we don't actually need this to be changed because of how we're going to be doing this. Anyway, so now we've moved it all out of the way. Custom, no, sorry, um, control rather. Automated control block can go right next to everything. So it's next to the weapon and the controller. And all we're going to do is, it's very simple, this one at least, it is, if I can actually see it, which would be fantastic, it should be hostile missile closer than X. So the X we're going to have as about 700. So there we are, and it should have a weapon system. Let's first of all just do this. Effect range of only 4 or 3, just to make sure. And then we're going to have weapon systems, fire weapons, and test. There we go. So that now is basically helping to control. Now, I'm not even sure if I even need the AI controller here. So, yeah, I don't know if I need this. Let 
Does that only fire once? See, I'm not sure how that works. I've never did the um, weapon systems using an AI segment. I control uh, block segment rather. Do I still need the AI controller here? Because surely if the enemy is there then this is going to be firing away constantly. Which is curious. I'm not too sure about that honestly. But anyway, so we're going to keep the range down and I may test it out in the sandbox or I might just go in, in and find an enemy with some missiles in the lower areas. In fact, that's probably the more fair way since I do want to avoid using the sandbox too much. So yeah, I'm not too sure how that works. So, duh, 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 where are you? Hostile missile closer than blank. See, here's the problem. Will this continuously fire it? That's the big problem because if it doesn't, and there we go. I didn't put a, a minimum range on that. That's what happens if you don't have minimum range. It fires every single weapon system. Still kind of cool to be able to do that by one click of the button, it must be said. However, effect range on only three or four would be much better. Thank you. Wait until I reload. Did I actually do these yet? No, I didn't. So let's um, change these over. Missile interceptor. We want the fragment. And we want the target position to be changed to a one turn, I imagine. Okay, and fire! Okay, so what we're going to do, in that case... Ooh, pretty. Well, that's the wrong one. So, so apparently four is too much, so we have to keep it on three then to be a bit safer. Okay, good, only side weapons this time. So we're actually going to remove the AI segment again. This is something I've not done before, so if I'm doing something wrong, then I'm doing something wrong, and hopefully it will continuously fire them. I'm not sure if it will, though. That's the big thing. I'm just going to replace this with um, regular cubes, because it's the easiest way to do that. There we are. Okay, so let's go and find an enemy to um, test out that system on. I'm really hoping, really hoping, that that continuously fires it once it's armed. However, I've got a feeling it won't. And let's make sure that you sign. And we also want a friend or foe. Not that it really matters since it's not got the correct parts, but I want it on there anyway because of reasons. In case I ever change it later. And let's have a staggered fire because I do like staggered fire on 0 0.2. Okay, let's go find an enemy and see if that actually even works. Just thought I'd show you how the new swarm missiles work now they're on the bottom of the scythe. As you can see, they all actually generally, with the odd exception, go straight towards the target after being released, which is a lot better. And then the lovely carpet bomb goes off as well. Sadly, that was an urchin, and thus had absolutely no kind of value to us. Also, it dawns on me, I may have said 50 um, meters per second earlier and actually meant 40. Anyway. Turn off the AI again, so only the command blocks will function, making it much easier to test, and let's continue to try and find a weak enemy with missiles. Aha! Here's a strong enemy with missiles. Well, let's try out that instead. We are against the mighty plunderer, so let's get straight into that and see if the new interceptor missiles are worth keeping. Well, here we go. Now, there's the flares. I wonder if the anti-missiles will go after the flares. It does make sense as they are counted as enemy missiles. That's why the lasers are going after them. I don't think I've even seen... Nope! Oh, is that them fi Oh, they have fired! They have fired! It's just impossible to tell which ones are which, though, because of the natural action of them all. I think that... Ugh, it's impossible because the whole point of the enemy flares is to distract our missiles, so of course, naturally, I haven't got a foggiest clue which one is actually the damn missiles we're trying to test out. Didn't think about that. Got to be honest, didn't even think about that. Hmm. Although the big test, of course, is if we can, if they do continuously fire. Which, by the looks of it, they do, because I, I can't see them reloaded yet. Oh, yep, there, go, there goes another one, so it does keep on firing them. I think it actually... No, yeah, it did hit it. Yep, it, that one did hit one of the flares, so it did its job. We just can't see the fragments because we are in degraded mode right now. Yeah, I am thinking about changing the mines. The problem is, I've actually increased, like I say, I've, I've increased the speed of the scythe, meaning that the mines are now even less effective. Hmm. The laser system actually worked pretty well there. 
Maybe it's because we've got less... Maybe it's because we've just increased the, the, the power of the engine. I mean, before we were struggling with the engine power, it could have just been a simple matter of not enough engine power for, for the lasers to function correctly, causing them to um, cut out as they were working. I, I, do, I do still love having these mines everywhere, though, it must be said. There is a certain satisfaction with that. But, but that's, all, that's why I like the carpet bomb, it's a completely suppressing thing, and, and I prefer it to style. But I will consider perhaps having multiple systems so they all fire in a shorter um, duration. Or simply f dropping them all at once. I am definitely going to consider that, it's not a guarantee though. Let's do this, there we are. It is kind of beautiful though. It is kind of beautiful. <laughs> I kind of want it to fire another missile at me so I can see if it works or not. I might actually just Google it, yeah, I'm actually going to Google them how the best setup is done to see if we've done it correctly or not, because it's going to be difficult to just test and not put ourselves at risk, particularly when we have both the laser system and the interceptors. Another one we could do, of course, is the flares themselves, I am tempted. Now here's a weird idea. We could possibly have some of these mines equipped with flares rather than uh, magnets. And by the way, th those explosions are not the ship hurting itself, they're the uh, repair drones going back into their bays. I always get confused that myself, just in case anyone was wondering why I suddenly had explosions. Actually, that's not a terrible idea. Why not flares? Let's do that now. I mean, there's not much to really see now, we're just watching a carcass being hit over and over again. So I think it's okay for me to leave the action for a second there. Oh, but just look at that, it's so beautiful. So if we just change a few of them for sticky flares... Maybe change the war. Ooh, changing the warhead would also make them more useful for the missiles. But no, I think I'd rather just have them randomly in the actual ocean. It'll also look quite pretty as well. But yeah, I believe honestly, just the altering of the engine itself might have actually solved a lot of the problems. So the interceptor missiles might not be completely needed. I'm not too sure. Also, it dawns on me, maybe a proximity warhead. No, no, because they get set off within a certain range anyway, don't they? So, hmm. There we are, just a couple random, just a couple more. I mean, this is quite a good idea. I mean, on the way down, they will act in the same way. Okay, back in a second once I have a quick look-see. Well, here we are, sadly, in the sandbox. After a good 10 minutes of having a look around online, I will say there was a shockingly low amount of things actually available on the missile interceptors and their um, nuances and all the little things we need to know about them. So we are in the sandbox with a crippled scythe. Yes, this scythe has all of its AI kind of stripped out and it has its laser systems turned off. We're going to be spawning in a very basic enemy platform I've just made, which will hopefully fire just fire missiles, nothing else. Well, it will definitely do that. And we'll see if the enemy, if our lovely ship can actually deal with that. So, on the deep water guard team, let's summon in vehicle test. Literally just a platform with an AI. I also apologise for the low frames. It's something to do with the Oh, 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 nope. That needs way more fins. I did not, oh, actually this time it's going to, yes, detonated. No fragments went off, however. Are the fragments even required? That's one thing I did keep on, um, ooh. oh, no, the fragments did go off that time. Well, may as well keep them in, I suppose, because even if I don't do anything, though, if, if I do hit an enemy, at least it'll do something. No, it doesn't seem to actually need the fragments at all, and this is working oddly well. Keep firing, keep testing. Yep, it's doing what it should do, and it's rather cool as well. But yeah, like I was about to say, sorry about the frame loss, it's something to do with the sandbox mode, I'm not sure what's going on, but every time I load the sandbox recently, I go down to like 30 to 35 FPS, whereas I'm normally on a solid 60, so I'm not sure what's going on there, I will try and look that up. Again, alpha games with loads of patches constantly happening, sometimes things go a little bit weird. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm very happy with it. It's very cool. It's very cool indeed. Not only is it actually working, admittedly this is against like um, single volleys and sometimes, yeah, I really need more fins and possibly different placement. I think this going sideways is one of the issues. It does have the one turner element on them, doesn't it? 
Come back up to me. Come on. Oh, did I lose the control block? I just lost the control block for that, didn't I? Well, we're going down then. That's what happens when you strip out almost everything inside. It's literally hollow right now. It's got the very basics. It's got the engine for the shields and stuff. It's got the ammo processors and then nothing much more. Yeah, maybe front... The thing is, it's going to have to be... So Here's the problem. I can't just make it forward facing because how fast we're going to go. But these are working pretty well. I do think that perhaps better fins are needed. Well, they're definitely needed. So let's just do this. There we go. This, so now it turns much more rapidly. And wow, it actually managed to go in a full circle and then stop the enemy missile. As if it does it again. This time, then all the ones on the side there. Look how much better they're doing. Okay, yes. Yeah, so we're going to have to go with a, a three fin build, possibly incredibly short range then. Okay. Very cool. Very, very cool indeed. I will be keeping this then. I will be keeping this. I'm not sure. Do we even need the one turn? I guess we do need the one turn. Because it just put, points it in the right direction. I don't think we need the fragment. I really don't think. Okay. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to remove the fragment warheads and see how it does. Stop bobbing. There we go. Fragment, you are now fins, fins, you are now fuel tank, everything go work now. So no, it has no warhead. Uh, where are the enemy missiles, if there are any currently in the air? Oh, did we actually kill the enemy ship? Oh no, there it is, okay. Here they come again. And the interceptors deal with them with absolutely no problem whatsoever. Okay, so the warhead really isn't a factor for the destruction of the enemy missiles. And the extra fins make them far more effective, as we can see. Well, that's the science done. I just don't know. Oops, Leslie. I just don't know how effective it's going to be for this. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to test is let's just um, destroy enemy vehicles for a second. Thank you. Okay, we're going to actually turn off the missile systems. We're doing a very easy thing, which is just taking away the control blocks, because of course this is a sandbox mode. We're not like removing them from the other thing. Again, sorry for the frame loss. I've tried restarting. I don't know what's going on here. I would try and stop it if I could and I just simply can't. Okay, so I should be here, right? Where am I? Where am I? I should maybe have my seat still... Am I in the water? No, I'm here. Okay, let me just remove this seat so I can go to the right seat. So, what I'm going to test out now, there we are, is the flares which we've put into the mines. We're going to see just how they do. Now, I don't have high hopes for them, I've got to admit, but it's going to be fun regardless. So, should be dropping the, the flares. Oh, look at the flares! Oh, look at that! Nope. Not even the slightest distraction. <laughs> no. No, the plunderer does it better because of how it moves. That's simply not going to work as intended. But on the upside, it looks really freaking cool. Oh, it worked! It worked once. And of course, when we're moving, Perhaps it'll work better, I'm not too sure. So, um, well, they're still going to be fun, regardless. So I think I'm going to keep both. Anyway, though, I'm afraid I am out of time today. Yes, indeed. I wasn't actually going to record today at all, but because um, I've been feeling rather ill all day after a very bad recording session yesterday where a lot of three out of four videos got scrapped. But I really fancied a quick game of this. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video and are enjoying the series, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continue continued in the future. We will continue to improve and eventually actually learn how to do most of these things. Thank you and goodbye.